everyone and welcome back to my YouTube page. So for today we're doing another Animal Crossing New Horizons Dream Address tour and for this one we're actually doing my um, island called Labyrinth which is based around the 1980s Jim Henson film starring David Bowie and this island is very very special to me because I grew up on the film and it was like a big part of my childhood so I decided to create an Animal Crossing island based around the film um, and there's a lot to it, it's a very complex um, island but if you'd like to tour it yourself I will put the dream address down in the description for you. Um, I first of all have set it at this time where it's very very gloomy and there's lightning as you just saw and there's rain and it's just when it's starting to get dark and I just feel like it's sets the perfect kind of spooky tone for this island so that's the first thing I'm going to point out about this island um, but let's get to it and explore this island and I want to just show you all what I've created. I'm going to say now as well that my island is very force perspective heavy, it's very cluttered, it's very difficult to get around but it's all part of the experience and it's what I think makes Labyrinth um, such a great island because you know it's going to be hard to get around it's a labyrinth so i will just say that and hopefully by the time that i've released this um there will be a map out there that has some kind of instructions on it um and points out where all the overlooks are and stuff just to make it a little bit easier for people to get around and make sure that you don't miss anything and also uh, most of it is reference to the film there are a lot of references to the film but there are some things and some areas that are not really in the film um, but I had extra space to work with so I just put things in and styled them to match the labyrinth and it's kind of things that I thought I think would be in the labyrinth um, so a lot of references but there are some things that aren't really referenced to anything but just to bulk out the island it is there so let's start on this tour uh, we've got the nice lightning going on uh, it's very gloomy we even have Sarah over here so she's just hanging out on the beach um, through dangers untold of course I had to make that her catchphrase I would have liked to put the whole phrase but I don't think it would have fit so we have to compromise uh, but this is the town area where Sarah lives so it's just before we enter the labyrinth and we have Sarah's house over here um, and in the backyard poor Merlin is sat in the rain having to just stay outside <laughs> so that's a nice little nod there um, but first of all we'll go into Sarah's house because that's just here so we may as well explore Sarah's house. Um, I tried to like match the interior design as much as I could but obviously in the film there's only particular angles that you can see from so I just did the best that I could and played around with it and there's some extra rooms that I just kind of made up on the spot. Um, so this is like the foyer when Sarah enters with her stepmom and um, they're having like an argument so that's this room it's very very simple um i tried to get like as many references in as i could and then just like booked it out with some extra things um that i think match the room and then over here we have like a little kitchen so yeah this is one of the things that isn't like referenced in the film but i just um tried to make it like as 80s as i could i guess um so that's in here just like a cute little family home and the best thing about the time I've set it at as well is um, if you like catch the lightning while you're inside it actually flashes through the window and I didn't know that happened um, so that's something new that I found out recently it's probably very very common knowledge but I only just found that out so <laughs> I was pretty excited about that and then over here we have um, like a bathroom it's a nice little cozy bathroom so that's here, just, you know, a lot of clashing colours going on and all that kind of thing. Um, lots of floral prints, um, lots of flowers and plants and stuff. Lots of clocks. We had to have a lot of clocks in Labyrinth because, you know, it's very, very heavily played on in the film. And, um, you know, there's a lot there's a lot of time talk, I guess. <laughs> I guess that's the best way I could describe it. Um, and then upstairs we have Sarah's bedroom so you know a lot of toys a lot of teddy bears um, all the things that Sarah loves we've got her vanity with a little crown on it we have her ballroom dress as well I'll have to try and like find all the designs that aren't mine and I'll even post the ones that are mine so I'll try and gather all the codes the best that I can and I'll post them into the description as well um, to help people find them who might want these codes so I will try and do that and then we have yeah all like the posters and stuff just lots of teddy bears just lots of things that Sarah loves 
um, even some autographs up there. So that's Sarah's room. Oh, and there was the lightning. Um, you might have just seen that like flash a little bit. Just makes me really happy. <laughs> and then the last room of this house is um, obviously the parents' bedroom and Toby's bedroom. So that is downstairs. And um, I did the best I could with this because obviously there's no cots. There isn't any like baby beds. So I had to just like leave that out, unfortunately. Um, but we have Lancelot sat there and we have the patio doors where the Goblin King comes in and just um, some like baby things and um, some things the parents might own. Uh, so yeah, that's, that's the house, that is the house. So coming out of the house, um, this is where it gets really exciting now because we're gonna enter the lab room. There's also the Able Sisters over this side just tucked behind the resident services. Um, but it was kind of one of those things where I just needed to get it in and this is just where it fit quite nicely. So that's the only thing left in the town. So without further ado, let's enter the lab room. This is the first thing that I ever built on this island. Um, so we're talking back in like March, so quite a few months ago now um so i've been working on this island for quite a while and this was the first thing that i ever made on it so this is my forced perspective of the labyrinth entrance and i still love this area and i think it still might be one of my favorites of my whole entire island um, and i think the weather just makes this absolutely perfect and like all the weeds and how rough it looks uh, we even have a little watering can over here for hoggle just lots of little references we've got the clock we've got like an owl because obviously this is like at the back of Sarah's house as well. So you have to kind of imagine that you've walked out the back of Sarah's house into this, if that makes sense. Because um, this is where Sarah stood with the Goblin King and then she meets Hoggle as well. It's all referenced around that. And so let's go into the lab room. This is where it gets so exciting. And I will say this is the only way that you can go. Um, so we have the wormy boy up here. We have the little worm who wants to give us some tea. That is the design that I did myself as well. And then we have the two walkways, so the more like rough, run down um, side of the labyrinth and also the like more neat, tidy side, uh, which Sarah looks up and down. But the only way that you can go is up through this kind of hidden entrance. If you look from this angle, it just looks very hidden, just like the film. So we slip behind here up the incline and we come out to the courtyard. So this is actually one of the first overlooks of this island as well. And we can even see the Goblin King down there just hanging around in the in the hedge maze area of the island. Um, and yeah, this just has like a really nice overlook, especially with the lightning. I just love it so much. Um, so this is basically like the area where we see Hoggle and Sarah come out of the Oublia area. Um, so they come up into a courtyard out of, I think it's like an urn, I think it's an urn or it's some kind of statue structure that they come out of and that's just a reference to this and there is a Mario pipe behind this, um, kind of easy to miss and this is also the only way to progress, this is the only way that there is to go and it goes a little bit backwards, goes a little bit backwards and we do drop into the oubliette. So this is another interior design. Um, this is the house that belongs to the character Jareth because the castle beyond the Goblin City is actually a forced perspective build. Um, so I decided to make a house that could house some of the um, set design, like the oubliette and the ballroom. Um, the ballroom is upstairs, very easy to miss. So that is there as well. Um, so of course, it's very spooky, very dark. We have lots of cobwebs. We have the helping hands, um, just like hanging out here, just to block the doors off as well. That was to block the doors off, but it was the best way to incorporate them. Um, so yeah, just a very, very spooky room. Um, so if we head upstairs now, then you can see the ballroom. I thought the ballroom definitely worked better as an interior build. Um, so this felt like the best place to put it. We have all the pearls on the floor that are to represent the crystal balls. Um, when Jareth pulls Sarah into this dreamlike state and she has all the crystal balls swirling around her, they are to kind of reference that. And we've got like a masquerade mask. And of course we've got a peach over here. We had to have a lot of peaches on this island. Unfortunately, my native fruit is actually a cherry, um, but I tried to incorporate peaches as much as I could because I think they just obviously work a lot better for this island. So yeah, this is the other interior. This is the second house and there is one last house on this island. 
And then the only way to progress on this island is to come out of that house and enter the hedge maze area. Um, so this is what you could see from the overlook and it's basically just lots of hedges in like a maze. It's pretty easy to navigate once you can get the hang of it, but honestly, I will admit, I have got lost in it many, many times myself while trying to build this island. And of course we have Jareth. I tried to put him in his masquerade outfit um, because it was very hard to dress this character because obviously, Wow, we had a mullet in this film. I had to use this like ridiculous wig. So he looks a little bit funny, but he's, he's cute. So he says, you remind me of the babe, of course, had to be his catchphrase. Um, so first of all, we will head to um, the left side of my island. We will go left first. And oh, we have another character hanging out over here. So we have Hoggle. I also included Hoggle on this island and he has his own little house as well. And he says, it's Hoggle, uh, which is in, in reference to when he's being called other names like Hogwar and he's like, no, it's Hoggle. <laughs> so that had to be his catchphrase. Um, so if we look up as well, there's a lot of like cliff sides on my island and I've like decorated every single one of them so that you can look up at any point and you will be able to see um, just stuff everywhere. It had to be done, it had to be like fully immersive. Okay, Hoggle's totally in my way. <laughs> right, there we go. So if we pop down here and out this side, we come into this part of the island. Uh, I honestly love, I mean, I, I'm gonna say that I love everything on my island because I am truly, truly so proud of my work, but I love this area so much. This is, of course, if we pan up, it's the false alarm area. So we have the false alarms um, with all the statues. Uh, I just love this so much. I just think it works really well. And I've just like dotted lots of stone stuff around as well um, to try and make it like as bulked out with stone as possible because obviously in the film, the whole entire walls of that area is made out of stone. Couldn't really do that. So we have um, just lots of stone to represent that this is a very stony area. So uh, yeah, I just love this area so much. And then we have to pop down here. This is where it could get really, really confusing for people because obviously there's a forest over here, but you can't go into the side of it. You have to go all the way down and round. Um, and over here as well, this is where Sarah eats her peach and falls into that dreamlike state. So that is to reference that. So yeah, we have to come down here um, and we have a shipwreck here. So on this beach, I had some extra space and thought a shipwreck could really work. I don't know, I just thought it could really work for this island. So I did it and I think it turned out pretty, pretty good. I'm pretty happy with it. Um, it just fits into everything quite nicely and cluttered up this beach very, very well. Um, so before we get to the door knocker side of things, let's head over to the last house. So this is Hoggle's house. Um, I decided he should have a little cabin sort of house on the island. I thought it was very fitting. Obviously, he doesn't actually have a house that we see in Labyrinth, but in Return to Labyrinth, he technically does, I believe. He lives in the Bog of Eternal Stench though. So um, I just had this extra space on my beach and the beaches were very, very hard because there's no beaches in Labyrinth. There is no beaches. So I had to improvise and I thought, Hoggle deserves a little bit of a house over here. So we gave him a house, we gave him a house. And I just left it at its like first state and added like lots of clutter, um, some treasure because we know that he really likes like plastic and jewelry and stuff like that. Just lots and lots of clutter. And this is kind of how I imagine Hoggle's house would look. So a lot of trash and stuff. So yeah, I just thought he deserved a little bit of a, a house as well. Even though he's not really hanging around it, which is a little bit odd. <laughs> So then coming back out here, this is another like hidden entrance. Um, so if we go to here, we have, of course, the door knockers. Oh, that was like perfectly timed light lightning as well. Um, and I've just tried to like make a good view here as well. So yeah, we have the door knockers and I've tried to put a little signpost here as well to maybe try and help people. Um, but of course we go behind the one with the um, knocker in his mouth, just like the film. And we come into the fire gang forest. The fire gang forest is where we now are. And I even have these little dress forms where I created um, the fire gang on. There's a couple of them dotted around. You can kind of see them every time you pan. 
And I also put Phoebe over here. So Phoebe, I will even go in her house. We'll even go in her house because it totally matches the vibe of the fire gang. Like she was just perfect for this. Um, I have lots of characters on my island, some who match, some who um, don't really reference anything, but they just sort of vibe with the island. So yeah, look at her house. And I did try and gift all my characters clothing as well, but <laughs> they won't wear it. So she's got two crowns in her house now. Um, but yeah, she has this lava themed house and I just think it really, really worked for the fire gang. So leaving Phoebe's house, we come back round the forest um, to this side and we have the entrance to the Goblin City. Of course, we had to have the Goblin City. You can't have Labyrinth without the Goblin City. Um, and we even have some villagers hanging around right now. So this is, of course, another forced perspective entrance. Lots of jail bars, just very gloomy, very, um, like intimidating i guess is a good word for this um pretty intimidating so we come up this way and this is a very very cluttered area uh, of course we had to have all the goblins cluttering up the city um i tried to theme everybody's house as well so we have book's house who owns a bookshop we have bonbon bon with a cake stall and some like fashion armor stall coming back here we have Tucker, who is the chef. We have Sparrow, who owns the archery stand. Up here, we have Clay, who owns the blacksmith stand. We have Fauna, who has the pottery stall, and also Deli, who has um, the kind of magic and potion stand. So they're my villagers. Um, we do have one more villager who lives on the other side of the island. No, wait, we have two. There's two more villagers that live on the other side of the island. Um, so I will show you those later. But yeah, this is the Goblin City and it's surprisingly not as laggy as I thought it would be because I know there can be a lot of lag when there's a lot of items. So I'm glad that has not happened. I am so happy because I know that people don't really like that. Um, so if we head over here, we have the first overlook. And this is, of course, of course, we have um, let me get the camera out so you can see it a little bit better. We have the castle beyond the Goblin City. Um, I think this was like the second build that I did on this island. And of course, it's a forced perspective. And I think when it's a little bit gloomy and dark, it silhouettes it a little bit better. And the darker that it gets, the more silhouetted it is. And I think that just works better than in the plain daylight. We head this way to the overlook behind Delhi's house. Um, there is another kind of forced perspective overlook this way. Um, so this is sort of an extension to the Goblin City and it's when they go past, I think it's the Bog of Eternal Stench and then they go through another forest and they stand at the edge and they can see the Goblin City in the distance and there's all the trash before it. There's the like garbage heap, I think it is, where um, all those goblins live. So that's to replicate this. Um, we have like all the dolls houses to act like little houses in the distance. And then we have all the trash up front here that you can just see scattered around in front. Lots of weeds, lots of rubbish. So that's a reference to that part of the film. And I was pretty happy with how this one turned out. Uh, I think it looks really cool. It was very, very difficult. This was probably one of the hardest things that I had to build. It took a lot of time and a lot of patience, but we got there in the end, we got there in the end. So I've just come back to Jareth's house to continue the tour, um, because now we have to go the other way in the maze. I will say as well, there's all these like little extra bits that you can run down and there's just like little bits of decorations in there. Um, I'm not gonna go through them now. It's kind of something that you can do if you visit the dream address, um, cause there's a lot to see. And there is a lot of like bits that might throw you off and it's very easy to get lost in but that's what i love about this island it's so immersive and it's just so easy to get lost in so if we head around this way i decided to give boots like a little bit of a mushroom farm i thought oh um the goblin king's in the way <laughs> come on jareth out you get um but i thought a little like mushroom farm could be really nice for this because i had again i had some extra space and this is the kind of thing that i could imagine being in the labyrinth like I could imagine this being totally somewhere in that labyrinth because obviously we only see so much of the labyrinth in the film it's a big place it's a big place we don't see it all so 
improvised and I thought, you know, a lot of mushrooms, mushroom farm could be really, really nice. So I gave Boots this because he has like a farming interior as well. So it kind of just ties in very, very nicely. And there's also just like some mushroom stuff around this area as well. Just love the mushroom stuff so much. It's probably one of my favorite things in the game, to be fair. So then we have to head this way. And if we go down here and then take a sharp right turn, we come into the museum area. So the museum area is like a very ele elegant core area. Um, this was one of those structures where I was like, I don't know really what to do with this. And then I came up with this um, very elegant core, kind of got a ruins vibe to it. Like I feel like there's a lot of ruin vibe to my island, if that even makes sense. Ruin core, that's what we're calling it now. <laughs> um, but yeah, I did this. Lots of statues, some more simple panels, lots of like white tones, and I even added lots of stars to this beach here. I thought the pops of colour was quite nice because there isn't a lot of colour in Labyrinth. There's not a lot of colour at all. So I had to be kind of very minimal with it in terms of like flowers and stuff. So there isn't a lot of flowers on this island. But I thought on this beach, some pops of colour could just be really nice and just like a little bit of a different vibe um, so that everything wasn't just the same. I wanted to add a little bit of variety in as much as I could. So that is why I made that choice. And then we have like a little bit of a statue garden here. Just again, very elegant core, very symmetrical. Um, I absolutely love how this turned out. I think it's so pretty. And like the pan up with the uh, museum in the background is just really dreamy. And I think it was just like a nice different vibe and a good way to tie the museum in um, and make it look like it belongs in the labyrinth. So now if we head down this way, we're getting to the last part of my island now. Um, I've just like filled out some of the beaches with like stone hinges and weeds and stuff down here. You can probably guess what we're getting to now. You can probably guess what the last um, part of my island is. So if we head down here, of course, we have the Bog of Eternal Sench. You cannot have this island without the Bog of Eternal Sench. It's just a staple in the labyrinth. Um, and I also, my last villager is Shep. And Shep lives over here because he reminds me of Ambrosius, um, the dog. And he also kind of looks like Merlin. I think we're technically the same dog, but yeah, that's why Shep lives over here. He's um, overlooking the Bog of Eternal Sench. And Sir Didymus is sitting up there as well on another mannequin design, just hanging out, protecting the bog. <laughs> so that's why Shep lives here. I think that was just very, very fitting. So then if we head down here, this is just pretty much like a very open space. Um, of course, just a lot of the bog. We're gonna have to step in it. We're gonna have to, um, we're gonna have to be smelly. And there is the steps that of course Ludo does jump over um, that are in there. And just lots of like clutter, lots of like, fossils and mushrooms and snakes. I thought snakes would be quite nice. Um, just lots and lots of stuff going on. If we come down here, this is where I put the campsite. I thought it just fit in quite nicely with this aesthetic and lots of cliffside design as well. Just pull it all together and just finalize those details. And then finally I added the shop onto the beach as well. And I just extend extended the bog pattern to make it just tie in with that area and just flow very, very nicely. So this is where the shop is. And so that is pretty much it for my island tour. I think I managed to hit all the pretty important parts on it and there might be some extra little bits that you could probably find on a walk around. So my dream address is on the screen for you right now. Um, and also I do stream on Twitch. I stream on Twitch and I built this whole island on there. So if you would like to see the progression of any of my future islands or you enjoy cozy, games because I, I play some other games on there as well um but yeah feel free to follow me on twitch i will put my link on the screen for you right now and i am going to be doing a new island my next island is going to be a victorian gothic spooky theme with a little bit of horror so that is going to be the next one that i will be building up on twitch and I hope you all enjoyed my island. I hope that I did this theme a lot of justice for any other fans out there. And I will see you in the next one. Thank you so much for watching. Bye.